Victor Oladipo is about to make his return, but with three six foot five wings and the five time All Defensive player Jimmy Butler, sixth man of the year favorite Tyler Hero, and Caleb Martin, who's got the NBA's third best defensive rating among small forwards, that gives Dade County not only one of the most well rounded teams this year, but likely the deepest team in their franchise's history. While Butler and Bam Bam rightfully get the brunt of the credit, the organization with three championships are top 2022 title contenders for reasons much deeper than their elite trio, including Kyle Lowry. So here's the real reason the number one seeded Miami Heat will be overwhelming to take down four times out of seven this upcoming spring. Right quick, only 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. South Beach is currently 43 and 22, holding the fourth best record across the NBA, along with the best winning percentage in the Eastern Conference. Even with 2021's marquee free agent signing and Kyle Lowry missing another stretch, the Heatles' dominance has continued. Without the NBA champion Kay Lau in their last four games, Miami's took on four expected East contenders in Chicago, Milwaukee, Brooklyn with Kevin Durant, and Philadelphia without James Harden. The Heat blew a 14-point lead to Milwaukee. Credit the reigning champs for an incredible comeback in that one. We'll get some more on that blown loss later on but Miami did beat the Bulls, Nets, and Sixers by a combined 36 points, minus the services of their all-NBA caliber floor general. But even casual fans know all about the impact from Miami's go-to stars in Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Kyle Lowry. That's a formidable trio you can count on to take you home in the postseason. But don't undervalue these two factors that are also going to make the Heat a nightmare to take four Ws over in a seven-game series. Firstly, we saw a prime example of it last night, the game planning from one of the NBA's brightest minds in Eric Spolstra. Against the second-seeded Sixers, given a top shot creator in Harden was out, Coach Spo made it a point of emphasis to completely take Embiid out of the game, holding him to 4 of 15 shooting, Multiple black shirts blitzed, doubled, and trapped JoJo, making it tremendously difficult for him to get to his hotspots. Give credit to the Heat players for their length and ability to play on a string, but Spolstra putting a point of emphasis on loading up the entire defense on Joel are the type of brilliant game plans that I'm sure Miami fans have gotten used to over the years. The second and equally undervalued factor making Miami overwhelming is their strength in numbers. Against Philly, Tobias Harris made a jumper with 5'10 left to pull the Sixers within seven, but two straight steals from one of the Heat's smartest players in Caleb Martin led to five quick points. First a Martin dunk, and then a Max Strews three-pointer, which put the game out of reach. Martin's two steals swung momentum, given Miami struggled against the Sixers' zone defense, which other teams are probably going to use on the Heat now. Teams beat the zone when they get the ball to the middle of the floor. In Miami's case, it should have been Adebayo or Butler taking a mid-range jumper or kicking it out to a three-point shooter if the defense collapses, but that didn't happen at all against Philly. Despite escaping with the victory against Philly, Spolstra's team has built up a bad habit of blowing big leads in the fourth quarter all year. Miami's had the wherewithal to escape with wins most of the time, but the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks made the Heat pay for letting their foot off the gas pedal. If Miami sticks to the crisp offensive actions that gave them the lead against Milwaukee, instead of playing iso ball with a struggling Jimmy Butler, that should allow them to hang on to leads more often. After a week full of games against teams at the top of the conference, the Heat remain in full control of the East. Victor Oladipo's about to return, Miami did their job against Philly, but they need to work on their execution in late game situations. They have to make much better decisions against teams which choose to whip out a zone defense. Kyle Lowry returning will help on both ends of the floor. The Heat are listing Victor Oladipo as questionable for their game against the Houston Rockets, meaning there's a 50-50 chance of the two-time All-Star playing for the first time in nearly a year, and the expectation is that barring any last second setback, his return is about to happen. Oladipo last appeared in an NBA game on April 8th of 2021, 
Man's been sidelined ever since while going through another recovery process following a second surgery, this time on his right quadriceps tendon, which he originally injured while playing for the Indiana Pacers in January 2019. Spolstra spoke on Victor's return, saying he has great fortitude. That's the toughest thing for a professional athlete, to get injured, and most of your time is away from the team. Probably when you talk about mental health, that's the most challenging thing for an athlete. You don't necessarily always feel you're a part of it. You have doubts. You don't know what it's going to look like on the other side when you do get healthy. You're not sure if all the work is really mattering. That's a tough place for an athlete, end quote. Even with the return of Oladipo around the corner, Heat fans are likely even more hyped about the progression from Boy Wonder in 2022 season. Three games in March thus far has seen Tyler Hero average 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists on shooting splits of 50-45-100. One of the top candidates for both 6th man of the year and the most improved player has developed into one of the NBA's smoothest and fundamentally sound shooters off the dribble. But as this current season has gone on and defenses have adjusted to his game, Tyler's made some changes to his playing style. Before the break, Hero averaged 11.8 drives to the basket and 3.1 free throw attempts per game. But in Hero's first five games following the All-Star break, he's averaged a team-high 13.4 drives to the basket, and that's helped him draw 5.4 free throws per game. Hero spoke on that change, saying, I think people know I'm a shooter. I shoot the ball well, but I think my best thing is off the dribble, getting into the paint, attacking, getting to the mid-range, getting to the rim. I think that's what I do best. I think I'm hard to stay in front of when you're playing the shot and then my handle gets me where I want to go. A lot of the mismatches I was drawing, I would break my defender down and I would try to get to the mid-range. I think going at seven footers when they're chasing me from behind, it's a tough shot. So just trying to get all the way to the rim, get into their angle and try and get an and one. Hero's comfort zone will always be the mid-range as 45% of his shot attempts this season have been from that area, but it's great to see him making adjustments to generate more efficient opportunities. Miami has a 22-15 record against plus 500 teams with the sixth easiest schedule remaining. The Heat have a combined 7-5 record against the top five teams in the Eastern Conference, They've got the league's fifth best defensive and net rating, the eighth most efficient offense. But what's the biggest strength of the Miami Heat? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Bradley Barker, who says, I think the main key for a deep Celtics playoff run is simply just sustaining their defensive play. The Celtics have an off night on the offensive end. High intensity defense will ultimately keep them in most games. In a seven game series, defense is the most crucial element of the game and can help overcome things such as poor shooting or a potential injury. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.